So here we are again. Cold snap. It's a lot colder. What do we not have? We don't have Country Steve. But we're going to go out fishing. I'll tell you who we do have. So besides a lot warmer clothes and no Country Steve, we've got Sarah from Lakewood, a newer company I'm working with. And then we've got a guy I've been with for almost 20 years, Chip Silver Street Tackle. So we're going to be pulling some spoons. We're going to be pulling some cranks. And other than that, stay tuned. Fishing's been interesting. It's been wacky. This weather you got at home, we got in the lake too. It's been super warm, Indian summer, then it went to super cold. The fish have been really deep. We haven't had that temperature break. So basically the top and the bottom have been the same. And as that flops, it can kind of throw the fishing off a little bit. We've been catching a lot of our fish super deep, but that's probably gonna to start to change today with this cold snap we've got. Surface temp on the lake has been like low 60s. It's probably gonna dip down a few degrees today, but air temps, we're like in the 40s. You know, we've even had some 30s here a little bit where it has been like the 70s. So that really triggers those fish. It's actually not a bad thing. In the springtime, it's a bad thing, but in the fall, it's a good thing. We want to trigger these fish. They're putting on the food bag. That's what they're doing. They're, they're triggering themselves to move back west, eating on the gizzard shad, all good stuff. Grown. We're in Lake Erie, here on Ohio. Now we've been there, if you look back at some stuff, me and Chip have done this a lot. We've done it on camera a handful of times too. And the weather's a heck of a lot nicer than it was the last time we did this. So go back and check out that video when me and him were fishing 40 mile an hour winds and ripped the deal right off the boat. But the reason we're here is this is where the gizzard shad comes. Southernmost point on Lake Erie. This is that migration, the fish coming back from the eastern side of the central basin or the eastern basin itself as they work back to the western basin. And you follow us with some ice fishing because we're gonna get them here in a little bit doing that too. So how fast are we looking at today? I don't know. We gotta ask the cat. We're probably gonna be about two, maybe two two. Is that is that pretty close? Yeah, two one to two three. We're still going pretty quick. The water's still warm. But if I know Chip, we're gonna be doing some little S turns to see if we need to go a little slower or a little faster. We're gonna throw our big board in the water here. This is how we run our lines instead of inline boards. We hook them all up onto the, the main line off the board and we get a fish that pops off and the fish is free and clean. We reel them in. No boards. And we just keep shifting stuff out as we go along. We get fish, just keep moving stuff out. So again, with this big change we got going on, we're gonna run one side with weights and one side clean as the captain's called, or basically just the line, no weights or anything like that. We're gonna see where, where that puts us. Now, one big difference from the stuff you've watched with me for years is on big boards, the leads have to be fairly close together or the fish won't be able to pull out. So on inline boards, you know, we're manipulating, moving things in and out. With here, we gotta keep them pretty close. So when you find them out, it's easier to catch more, but until then, sometimes you have to kind of experiment and move those leads up and down, but a side at a time. How I like to set these up is we're back to our desired lead length of, of targeting the depth we want. Um, because I run a, a braided main line, when we half hitch a rubber band there, it creeps a little bit. It's not so bad with the plugs, but if you run jets and spoons, it pulls a lot harder, so that'll creep and change your lead lengths. So what I do is I take the palm of my hand and I wrap that line around there one time then I take the rubber band, I go through there and I half hitch it right on there. And then sail the loop, it cinches right down on there. Now it won't creep at all. It'll stay right there so I can always know what my lead links are. If we start getting fish, I can go back and repeat that again so we can keep catching fish. This is Sarah from Lakewood. She's oh. coming in. She's the reeler. Crap. We've got another fish going down the other side, but. We'll, oh yeah, we'll clear these lines. Fish, fish everywhere. Fish. Lines, lines everywhere. This would be what we're avoiding, the massive tangle. Here, reel that in. That's the fish. Oh, mm, mm, two fish. I'll mm. clear this other line that you... I'm, I'm glad out. you understand that who's the star of the show. You know, I get, I just reel in fish all day I've worked with, with Chip. I've worked with beginners before I know the drill. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I've got a line on that. I think I'm underneath. 
I got over? No, here. Oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. Got it. Good. Okay. Keep reeling. I can reel and net though, you know? I don't trust you in that. Yeah, it's nice. There we go. There we go. That's what they look like. A nice one. No. Could we put some Barnum and Bailey music in there? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> It's like a three ring circus and, and you're clear. Thank you very much. <laughs> and the clown master, I mean, my favorite Captain Ship. My side's not all tangled up. I got but it don't have back. fish either. I Look, mean, we I'm got just, no I'm rods left on Ross, Ross's I side. I told him we got to go 100 back. I told him. Giddy up. Crap, this one ain't even net worthy. Well, it's on your side. You reeled it in. Well, that's because I just, what I do. I mean, mine was obviously bigger on my side. I mean, <laughs> here we go. So here's the deal. We're plug pulling over here in Huron in the fall, but I still feel like we kind of got a little silver streak vibe going on because I always confuse these names, as you know. Is this Piston Cup? Yeah, that's Piston Cup. Piston Cup. And Since I can't leave well enough alone, I got to paint. paint them to match your spoons. So. Cranking away. Look at even you know that's not a giant fish. That's a fish that's a few years old, but just the giant belly on that thing. Just a really healthy fish. We got a great problem in Lake Erie right now. We got a lot of those fish in that 20 inch range. So Chip, you know, when you guys are fishing in the summertime, a lot of times your leads are all exactly the same because you're kind of dialed in those fish are in a pocket. Out here we started with a 10 foot difference in the separation of each line, meaning we started like 100, 110, 120, something like that. But explain to the people that that doesn't necessarily, as you move on during the day or the water temperature change or the angle of the boat changes, all, all these different things that all of a sudden 120 isn't 120 anymore, is it? Yeah, there's a whole bunch of factors that come in there. A lot of it with our, with our main line too is, I keep mine pretty low on the gunnel. Some of the guys have theirs up high. Um, the height off the water where that clip attaches is going to change your lead length from way out to your inside lines. So, so like right uh, that now, can affect it. Yeah, if you this say, inside line has got 30 feet out of the water. Yeah. So it's 130 back, but it's only got 100 foot in the water. Yeah. You go to the outside, it's like three feet. It's in the water. So that changes your lead quite a bit, just on where it's at on the line, uh, how far out on the board it is. So if you had all of these, let's say at 100. That doesn't really mean you're all They're at the all same exactly depth. Exactly the same. Amount. So if you start catching fish on the inside or the outside, that's something to pay attention to. Yep, you got to watch that. Okay, now you see that line's crashing all over. We're over here not paying attention really, and this one just cleaned it right out. But the big thing is, Chip will tell you, you don't want to start cranking these things right out of the gate. You want that to pull out from the spread so that we can't tangle especially as these leads kind of get mixed up. So you want that thing to pull out and basically around the whole deal. So we're not, we're gonna be really patient with that. Because if you're not, you're gonna have a lot of scissors and you're gonna have a hot mess. Hashtag poop show and your deal, right? Never. Never? Never. No, I didn't think so. Only when I got beginners fishing with me. That's right, that's right. Now you do know, just so you, before you get too much farther, we do have clips of you from the local catching with big water fishing back in the day in the small boats. You gotta see those guys. That was extreme conditions. Now, now he's putting now he's putting parameters on the, on the poop show. <laughs> I don't recall that memory very good. You have to. Oh, that you don't have to. We up. have video. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll bring it back for you. Yeah, here it is. <laughs> Pretty much the worst case scenario here is happening. We got some horse flopping. We want to be a charitable captain. Yeehaw! When you've got something like that, you don't know what's happening, but you know it ain't good. You've got a board flopping. Thank God we got Ron on the wheel actually overriding the autopilot because it's just kicking on us so bad. And we're just trying to keep things straight. It's kind of not really fishing right now. It's more like survival mode. So I'm going to get busy helping Chip. He said, yeah, I, that didn't happen. Boom, magically it just appears in the show <laughs> three right years up. earlier. Yeah, uh, I see how it is. So we're just getting back to that band. So this is actually where it was popped out. So if that helps give you a reference on how far that thing pulled behind. 
We don't have a fancy graphic. We're just we're just a backwoods operation. But basically, you're pulling around that spread so there's no way for it to tangle. No. Now, like Chip was saying earlier, though, if you're crabbing, which means kind of troughing or quartering up or down the wind and not going with them, now you probably got to wait even longer because that fish won't necessarily pull back the same way, especially if he's not as big. And I guess this is one of the things that, we're, you know, this is really a productive way of doing things and a lot easier than kind of what I do. But the thing is, is Chip, I mean, back me here if I'm right or wrong, but when it gets to be colder and you got to slow down, this becomes a little bit of a situation. Yeah. Everything's See, a little trickier because nothing's pulling back as good. You're going a lot slower. The boat doesn't steer as quick. Everything gets a little more intricate. So now, Chip being the captain he is, what he's doing is he's dropping all of those lines down because the fish that have hit so far have been our higher lines or farther away from the boat. So he's going to make that and basically repeat what we're doing. So by the time I get this fish in, we're going to be ready to just unhook and reset. So the outside line is now going to become the inside line. It's like a big game of musical chairs. You know, this braid, I'm not used to this braid either. I'm usually using mono on my boat. So the braid on the board lines is, it's a little better fish. I think the way he pulled out, or at least he's aggressive. Yeah. But with the braid, you've got no stretch in there. So it's harder to tell a lot of times. And I'm always nervous anyhow like a little nervous now he's got a little he's fat staying, belly on he's it staying down there you don't want to show yeah, yeah that's like a little richard simmons out there he's short and fat baby mm. yeah. oh yeah actually it's not even rich that's taller than richard simmons this is more like a chip fish coming in not too long not too short slightly plump it's a beautiful looking fish <laughs> yeah you got your story i got mine So we got that leader and we're just gonna walk it right back. Let him, oh, 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 oh. way to stick with it, Captain. That was almost a poop show right there. Ooh. I was gonna say right at the head and get the hooks and then I did it. <laughs> wow. So. It's just Ross's fish, but. I'll tell you what, we, we certainly aren't gonna start talking patterns with, uh -oh. you know, Another release over here. 10 minutes in, but antifreeze so far this water is cleaned up we've had a bunch of blows and it's cleaned up quite a bit and antifreeze is taking the last couple fish something to pay attention to as the day goes on fish false, false alarm so when you're pulling these big board there's a few differences from the stuff you guys have watched with me for years one of them is the tow line itself now a lot of guys will use like three four hundred pound dacron or braid of some type to pull that board out and while that'll work fine a lot of the guys like chip that are kind of dialed in in the know they actually use a weed whipper line because you're gonna have a little more stretch it actually kind of helps the lines or the clips slide down a little bit easier but it acts as kind of a buffer it's almost like a shock absorber so some of the guys that are running braided line are going to have a shock absorber at the bottom but this way you've got kind of a shock absorber in the entire line and I believe, and Chip believes, and a lot of our buddies, that you're actually going to catch more fish. The big caveat with that is, is make sure you change that out because the sun will kind of eat that up when it's on your reels. But having something like the line there, weed whacker instead of braid, probably going to catch you a few more fish. So I realized that I'm better at fishing than running cameras because camera dude was, you know, he's been with me like a decade, <laughs> but he's on the floor. Long story short, I'm trying to run out of camera, we're trying to fish. So I'm going to stick to fishing, he's going to stick to camera, but now, he had Mike Tyson's TKO, like right on the floor, if you're old enough to know that. Um, you young kids, just work with Flash me. Jaw. Flash jaw. Got knocked out. Anyhow, Chip's got a fish on. We got camera guy up. He's living again. It wasn't brown bag syndrome or anything was, like that. It was ugly for a minute. It was. He says, okay, I mean, I'm not going to make it. down and out. I'm not going to make it. He was getting the 10 count. Feeling better than ever. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. Okay. He he sweated it out. It was hey. a cold sweat. It got through. Now oh, this dude wants to fight. You got a little. This is a Ross fish. There's a lot of attitude going on. He didn't want to come wow. up either. What? The I know heck? that that fish fought hard. He popped the release good. Then he kind of gave up. I thought you farmed him like country. I Steve. did too, man. He was just. Oh yeah. Up. First bite on this thing, but it's a good one. It's a good one. Looky, looky. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's what them babies look like. 
trying to avoid them treble hooks in my mouth. All right, look at that thing. Just that's almost just give me a little slack there. One little hook in them there. What excellent quality fish. I mean, there's not many places you can go and just every fish is quality like that. Big, thick fish, putting the feed bag on. Healthy, healthy. I thought you were gonna say excellent reeling job since it was barely hooked and I got him in the boat. There was no excellent reeling there. There was marginal reeling. Ask me how good it was. It was just good enough to barely get it in. That's all. <laughs> So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we just pop that sucker out. So we're gonna give this one to Sarah here, but don't reel yet. We're gonna give it a little bit of time because what we wanna do is we want that to pull out. You can actually see the line, it's kind of hard, but we're gonna pull out of that spread, especially with these longer leads like Chip was saying. It's a, it's a big problem if you get tangled up. We good, Chip? Yep, we're good, start reeling. Go ahead. Yep. So now what Chip's gonna do is, he's gonna run over here, cause he's faster than me. About the only time we can ever say that. And, and he's gonna slide all these lines down. So he's gonna be ready. Pretty much we're gonna unhook, I'm gonna net and unhook this thing. It's gonna be like a finely tuned machine. And I'm gonna hand him that rod immediately after I net it. And he's gonna have that one going. So that outside rod that hit again, yet again, is now gonna be the inside. So we're gonna see if it's, as these lines get closer in here, if it's the fact that it's just farther away from the boat, which you guys have seen with me many times, or if it's because it's those higher lines. We got one on the diver. Take it. The doubling down. <laughs> Wait till Sarah right gets hers in here. She's close. There it is. Don't walk back yet. Yeah, right right here. Here. Reel till you get that bead right to the tip of the rod. And then, then okay, now keep reeling, keep reeling. I'll walk back. I think we're starting to see a pattern here. And a freeze and a little higher. Yeah. You know, it's too it's too close to probably sell them out as, as you say. But look at that, just in the tip of the nose. This guy's, so that's our thrashing a little bit here. We got us a little custom silver streak here. And a freeze. Drop that rod tip, give me a little slack, yep. So, I'm gonna do two things at once. A good captain always gotta be able to do two things at once. We're just gonna still peel this line out here, but we're gonna get fish, chips fish on the diva. Nice so, was this on a low setting or a high setting? Uh, this was a two setting, so I kinda had it in between because I'm only running one diver, so I kinda run it in the middle. And that's on a mini spoon. I got it, coming. So originally, guys that are in the know, this was a kind of steelhead spoon, but you guys redesigned this thing how many years ago? Uh, about 10 years ago now, I think I redesigned this. And I'll uh, tell you what, it more just- More like the junior. It flat out catches these things. Whoa, unlike me. Almost caught Captain Ross there. Yeah, <laughs> almost caught a big pooper. <laughs> but I can promise you, if you don't have a, a selection of these minis, Nice purple veg. That is a really good spoon for walleyes. I, I actually do a lot better on the bigger spoons now. And I think it's just because we can keep the little ones off and keep the junk fish off, right? And a lot yeah. of this bait fish we have is a little bit bigger. So don't overlook those bigger spoons that we didn't used to not catch the jack on well, those things. I mean, that's why we're running plugs right now. We could run spoons, but we catch so many small fish. Um, I did it a couple weeks ago, it's like, Man, I couldn't keep the little fish off. I was just... I still, you know, occasionally I'll downsize. Can't run enough rods. Yeah, occasionally I'll downsize with some of the small ones if I'm not catching real good, but most of the time, the bigger spoons have actually been considerably better. Yeah. It's a real tough bite downsize, but... I don't know we got a pattern. We got quite a few things working. The antifreeze has been good on your custom paints, yeah. but we've got the clean, as we call it, with no weights, and we've got the weight side doing about the same. Uh, Maybe a little more on the I weights. Think, no, I think the... The weights are a little better. A little bit. But it's pretty from, close. From, if we were guiding right now, would you be making a change already? You gonna or would you let it ride? No, I think uh, it's not it's so close that I wouldn't change yet. That's a nice one. Well it's chartreuse, it's not antifreeze, but it's chartreuse. Yeah. Say yellow. 
Just What's another it's got nice, yellow in it. nice, healthy fish. You can see, putting the feed bag on, it's fall. It didn't feel like we had Indian summer until about yesterday. But just a nice, nice, thick fish. Now, this, this, is about, this is about Chip is about as much as it is me today. You know, yeah, it's about Captain Chip. I'm, we dial it down. I mean, we got two bosses here. You gotta be, you know, I'm, I'm basically at work. I know this doesn't look like it, but I'm at my day job. I don't want HR coming down on me, again. I think we can officially say fall is finally here. We're switching things over slowly, but things worked out good, even though it wasn't running the show. A little bit of difference, good change of pace. Wait till you see what we got coming. Fall, big haul walleyes, and ice fishing soon.